Hi, I'm John D'Antonio, the Producing Artistic Director at Creed Repertory Theater. And I'm Caitlin. <laughs> we live in Creed. Yes. You know, we've noticed this amazing phenomenon uh, with Creed and CRT. We don't know whether it's the mountain air or what, but everybody falls in love here. I, I know. It, I, it's, it, it's incredible. It's a magical town. It's like a fairy tale place. But we have so many love stories in CRT alone, um, yeah. including ourselves, yeah. that we thought we'd share some of these wonderful stories with you. Yeah, folks who either fell in love here or held huge events of their life or whatnot. And we can't wait to share those stories with you. And to get us started, we thought we'd share one of our own. So John and I actually got engaged here. We got married here. We had our son Leo here. So this is, we have a, we have a home here. <laughs> yeah. This is a big love place for us. So we thought we'd talk about our engagement for just a minute. Yeah, so I was here in February of 2014. 2014. Good job. Got the dates. And I was doing, it was uh, a writer's retreat, writing a play. Actually, the first draft of Kind of Red, which was very fun. And for Valentine's Day, Caitlin was going to fly out and visit. And I had a big plan. I had the ring. I was going to get engaged on Valentine's and Day. I had no idea of any of this. Yes. So and Valentine's Day gets there. And that was the plan. And it's funny <laughs> how plans work sometimes because every single piece fell apart. First, the flowers in the morning, which I had been... I, I had them in the garage overnight to keep them secret. You know, it was very cold. It was frigid, and so they had wilted and whatnot by the morning. So that was a <laughs> fail. They were brown and sad. There were all these fun events because it was cabin fever days, and we were going to go uh, cross-country skiing. And uh, so we were driving up Bachelor Loop to do so in my Honda Civic, but it was muddy because it was mud season at that point. It was getting a little warm but in the, during the day, so the Civic couldn't make it up. So we had to park the car and hike up Bachelor Loop with skis in hand. Like a mile. Yeah. yeah. And down came a Jeep flying down the road. And we were like, uh-oh. And we got to the side of the road, and it was muddy. But we didn't get far enough, so we were splattered with mud. So Head that was cool. Toe. So we yeah. said, bail on the skiing then. We'll do, we'll do moonlight skiing. And so we went out that night for moonlight skiing, but it was overcast. And so, unfortunately, you couldn't see anything. And uh, if I had gone down on one knee, you wouldn't have even seen it. So I was like, nah, forget it, not tonight. Bail, bail. So <laughs> I didn't know any different, but February 15th rolls around and we were doing Boomtown that night. So we drove from our, our place we were staying to go down to, to the theater. And it was like five minutes till we were supposed to be there. And as we're driving, I look over and the little white church on the hill is filled with lights. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I was like, John, look at that. I wonder what's going on. And he said, well, uh, let's go check it out. And I was like, ah, we're going to be late. We can't be late. And he said, well, you know, I think we should check it out. I thought, what? OK, I guess we can check it out. So we stopped the car and uh, I walked up to the to the church and there was fairy lights and mason jars in all of the windows open the doors, candles all over the ground. Um, it was beautiful, rose petals, and I just started crying because it was just stunning. Sean got down on a knee and, and you know, asked me to marry him. And, and just as I said yes, a yes that was loud enough to reach South Fork, uh, fireworks exploded over the church. I don't know how you planned that, but no. it was it was gorgeous. <laughs> There's a lot of luck, a lot of coincidence, and a lot of help from friends, which is the usual way in Creed, and I'm forever thankful to those folks. And then we went and did an improv show, and that was one of the most fun improv shows we've ever had, as we, you can We imagine. got a standing ovation for yeah. being engaged. Someone asked John, you know, was it okay? They put their thumbs yeah. up, and I was like, how did the, these people know we were getting engaged? And he was like, so <laughs> they all clapped for us. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, now, so now we've got a little Leo. Leo, oh. come here. Do we want to go see him? We yeah. can come see him. Yeah, come, come on. Here, baby. Come on. Let's go say hi. Hey. 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 Hello, baby. <laughs> Yay! There's Leo. And this is little Leo. <laughs> Whoa. Are you playing with the rabbit? Yeah, there's the rabbit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and now now we've got a lot more CRT and Creed love stories for you. I hope you enjoy them all, and thank you to everyone who submitted a story. We love you guys, and we love all of you out there, and thank you for all of your help to CRT and the organizations of Creed during this Giving Tuesday. Thank you. Love you. Love you all. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Neil. <laughs> I'm Christy. And I'm Brownie. And we, we want to tell you a little bit about what Creed has meant to our 
uh, love life and our life in general. Yeah, it's a we we met in 1971, so we've been together almost 50 years. It's really amazing. But a CRT was a very important part of our lives be, becoming what they are today. Uh, Christy did the 73 season, and I didn't come till 74. And when I came, I totally fell in love with the town, with the experience. And I saw Christy being pitched over Mandy Patinkin's shoulder and a Charleston number. And I thought, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've been there ever since. <laughs> yes, this would have been our 46th season had we been able to have a season. And we're still hoping to have a little bit of a season um, with everybody's help and with the cooperation of the COVID-19 virus. So fingers crossed everybody and we're just staying healthy until then. But we uh, are, I think the, the greatest symbol of what CRDT has meant to uh, our love life is the fact that we got married on the Creed stage in 1981. 81. And that was the year that Christy was, uh, was in the show that we got married on the set. And, and she played Nora in a doll's house. And at the end of the, at the, um, production, she leaves her husband. <laughs> so that was... Wasn't right. a bad omen after but all. We decided we'd been together long enough that that wouldn't happen. So. <laughs> now I've performed marriages on the stage and Brown has photographed the marriages of many people in the CRT companies over the years. And that's been such an honor for both of us, uh, including the honor of being present at John and Caitlin's wedding and uh, photographing it. So it's just, it's, it's meant everything. It's meant that we can, we have been able to have a life in art. We've been able to live our lives, uh, half of our lives anyway, in Creed and um, do our art. Brown has been able to paint and take pictures both in Creed and in Lawrence, and Christy has done some acting besides Creed, but it's really mostly Creed. Mostly Creed. And, and we just spend our winters sitting here waiting for the Creed season to start. <laughs> <laughs> it's pathetic, really. No, it's not. <laughs> it regenerates our souls. <laughs> we are, yeah, well, we can't wait to get back every spring. We can't wait to get back, and now. We're waiting and waiting and hoping because we would have left today. This yeah. is May 1st. Happy May Day. Uh, and yeah, Christy had all her lines learned. So. <laughs> <laughs> For the show that I'm not going to do. <laughs> but if anyone wants to see it, just give me a call and I will do my lines for you on the phone. <laughs> and, and we are, we're really looking forward to Creed, even if there is no CRT season whatsoever, but we're hoping that we can do a little token season so that, you know, we can say there was one. Brown's yeah. learning to juggle and I'm going to learn to walk a tightrope so that we, we can do some outdoor entertainment. So get ready, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we always need your support. Thank you for, for tuning in and watching this ridiculous babble because we don't we're not so good at extemporaneous speaking we need lines and uh we're waiting anxiously to be given more lines and to be able to see all of our creed friends again uh so everybody take good care and come out when it's safe and we'll see you soon mm -hmm. we hope and everybody associated with crt with the the members of the company and with the audience members and with, with the community in Creed, you're all family to us. I mean that sincerely. Creed is our home more than any place else in the world. And we've had, you know, almost 40 anniversaries there in the summer and uh, 46 seasons. And it's just, 
it's our it's our pleasure and our life and our love and so we're looking forward to getting back there hope to see you soon bye Hey, Creed Red family, I'm Becky Gibble. I'm Charlie Thurston. And we spent, I spent five glorious summers uh, at Creed at the Rep. I spent four summers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like so many couples before us, we fell in love at Creed. And um, now we're married. Uh, yeah. And Creed was so, so central to our discovery of our partners in life, that uh, Charlie and I were engaged for four whole years simply because we would not get married anywhere but Creed, and it took us that long to get back. Yeah, it was, um, we wanted that. It just didn't seem right to have the ritual be any other place. Yeah. And uh, eventually, it just worked out that Creed decided to produce my play history room, so we jumped on the opportunity and um, had a very small, uh, ceremony that was in Damien and Michelle's backyard and we were married by one, the one and only Christy Brand. Because we couldn't think of a better example of love than Christy and Brownie. And here's, oops, I'm pushing the wrong button again. Oh my God, technology, this thing. So here's Christy Brandt marrying us in Damien and Michelle's backyard. Oh, it's such a good day. And Creed is a magical, magical place. It's magical for us. I know it's magical for you. And we hope that it will continue for many, many years to be special to so, so many more. We love you, CRT. So, Lavor and I were living in New Jersey, uh, doing that freelance lifestyle. And I sort of secretly, I guess, um, got on Art Search and saw the advertisement for the job at Creed Rep. And I didn't know anything about Creed Rep, but I knew I liked Colorado. Um, and the job seemed like sort of a dream job, so I applied um, in secret. Um, so Wendy, who knows if you'll be able to hear what we're saying, um, got an interview. Did a, a video interview, fell in love with the humans, uh, and then came out for uh, an on-site interview and fell in love with the place and uh, went back to New Jersey. And, and <laughs> all she did was talk about the stars. <laughs> the stars are great. So it was like this. How was the trip, Brittany? How was the trip, Brittany? And then her response was to be the stars. <laughs> saw the stars but I was like the town and you know the theater babe the stars and the theater and the town but, but yeah it was the stars that like put it over the top for me um and he's the best human on the planet and moved here sight unseen with me and it's been wonderful yeah I have new hobbies now I play pickleball on Tuesday, Thursdays, <laughs> with some folks, and they make they make me run like crazy. <laughs> and this is Miss Luna Luby. Yes, we got her uh, last summer, and she loves it here. Oh, thank you. So do we. I feel very, very grateful uh, for the town and the community and the company. Hi, guys. Uh, we're Vince and Elizabeth. Luhan, because we just recently got married and uh, we have a wonderful business and a wonderful home together and re we're really happy. But to back it all up, we fell in love in Creed. We fell in love by seeing shows at CRT. And as a matter of fact, 2015 was our magic year that we actually fell hard in love. And it was the 50th season and it's really memorable. But after that, something even more memorable happened. Uh, so in 2018, we saw every single show at the theater. We live in Alamosa, so we had to travel up. Um, and we got to the end of the year. We were making our last trip of the season up to Creed. And we always love to go and say hi to everyone and get all our hugs in with our friends. And we were up there. We were sitting in the Ruth 
theater, um, getting ready for the show to start, and right before it's supposed to begin, ed, uh, the education director, Johami, comes on stage and she says, I'm so sorry, the light board is broken, and we can't, uh, or we have to delay the show for about 10 minutes. We have to go get the other light board. All right, so we just wait for them to go get the other light board, and Vinny stands up and just walks out onto the stage and out of the blue, completely surprising me, um, proposes. He asked me to marry him in the Ruth Theater in front of all of our friends um, who were there to see the show. So it was a really incredible, thrilling, magical experience for me. It was really um, brave of you and meaningful of you to do it in such a special place. So Creed and the Creed Theater has always been really important in our love. Well, and I didn't know how I was going to propose, but I knew it had to matter to her. I knew it had to be important to her. And I remember thinking, I should do it at a Creed show some way, somehow. Well, that summer, I was sitting there, and I didn't even know I was going to propose that day. We are just going to a show. It was a great summer. Good shows coming up. And I thought, oh, this is the last show of the summer. If I don't do it now, next year, I'll have to wait next year to, to do that. And uh, lo and behold, my heart started racing and I just couldn't believe I had to do it now. And I just said, come on, Vince, you can do this. You can do this. Get off your seat. Go down there and propose to this woman. Oh, I was shaking. I was so nervous. Um, uh, but it ended up being just the best decision I ever made. And we're so happy for it. And we were so happy for Creed and CRT because CRT gave us uh, that love and that magic. And we try to carry that magic with us every day of our lives we remember don't forget the magic when things get hard in our lives don't forget the magic and crt reminds us of that so we just want to say thank you thank you crt hello hi my name is Arusi. my name is me and we met in creed in 2014 mm -hmm. i was an actor there for the season and i was the house manager and we lived in the same building i was on like the top apartment duplex yeah, yeah. and then i was on the bottom yeah, and well, what's, what's special about Creed? Why did um, we fall in love? We were both kind of adventurers, and so on our days off, uh, we yeah. kind of planned trips. Yeah, we used to go to like Pagosa Springs, or we went to Aspen. Durango, a couple times. Yeah, uh, Great Sanders National Park, too. Beautiful. And actually, I remember uh, our first like date, I, I asked her if she wanted to go on an adventure with me. And she said yes. And we drove, I think it was like in the middle of the night, and we drove like on this little highway that's like leading up to Creed. And we went like on the side of the road and we just looked at the stars. Which were so bright, there's no light pollution whatsoever. Yeah. It was and gorgeous. Yeah, so I think Creed is just like, I don't know, it's a special place. Where wandering souls meet. <laughs> so corny. Uh, and Pleasure. we also. We just adopted a dog. Oh! Who's part of our family. So he's in the love story. Say hi, Boba. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Our Creed love story. Bye. <laughs> hi, I'm Heather. I'm DJ. Um, we met four years ago in Creed, but the story starts about two and a half decades ago when my parents met in Creed in the 90s. Um, they had a not so typical love story that um, resulted in two wonderful children, both of whom still live in the area and love it here. Um, and DJ moved here four years ago because he loves hunting and fishing and what better place. Um, we are very happy to be here. We got married two weeks ago. Very Creed ceremony. Um, not supposed to be in Creed, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. And we are so happy to be involved with all of the goings on at the theater. Um, it was actually during Pride preparations when I decided to propose. Um, and yeah, we love CRT, we love Creed, and we know you guys do too, so thanks. I'm Bethany Talley. Hi, I'm Graham Ward. And we've been with CRT since 2012. We yeah. spent our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth wedding anniversary um, 
with the theater in Creed. CRT was our first gig out of college. We met and got married while we were still students. And uh, Graham's contract started while I was still finishing up the last semester. And uh, it was our first time being apart from each other. And, <laughs> you know, we were young newlyweds. And um, so Graham was in Creed. I was still in Utah. So I drove from Utah to Creed without telling him and showed up on his doorstep. And when he saw me, it was really sweet. He might have cried. I did, I cried. We met in college and got married fairly young. Um, so CRT is more the place where we kind of settled as a couple and uh, had kids. So we've got uh, Eileen, who is just born. And we've got Edie, who is uh, two now. But we've played all sorts of relationships uh, in Boomtown. Some of them romantic or married. There was a scene where we played ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, you, you used one introduction to describe to the audience everything I wore to bed at night. We had our first real fight in Creed. <laughs> yeah. It was over Star Wars. The stakes were pretty low. My, I loved doing Our Town with you. That was the 50th season. Yeah, so in 2015 we got to do our town together, and we played brother and sister. So that's not weird. <laughs> not weird at all. Then, but we got to stand up on the ladder and look at each other. Yeah, it's And pretend fun. it was sibling love. We've gotten a few chances to act across from one another, um, and specifically at CRT. So another one was in the 10 Minute Play Festival, I think that was also 2015. We played, she played Amelia Earhart. Oh yeah. And I played um, her co-pilot. Uh, who in this version of the story was also kind of a romantic partner. Creed really uh, became our home for a few years. Uh, we had uh, three winters where we were there year round and um, we still own a house there and uh, have been back every summer since 2012. It means yeah. a lot to us. It's the place where we figured out a lot about who we were as individuals, as a couple, um, where we decided to have kids. Uh, so it's been quite a ride, but um, Creed is a really special place. It's magical and uh, there's just something amazing about a simple life lived amidst uh, natural beauty. I think what uh, something that CRT has given us is just a lot of opportunities to laugh together. I don't think every couple gets that chance that like, yeah. that our profession supports that just getting to laugh with each other. Uh, we still sing silly Boomtown songs to each other. Um, there are definitely a few that have stuck around. Most of it just goes into the improv after birth. <laughs> <laughs> after birth. <laughs> it's just, you know, the fog of memory fades away. We've also had a lot of tough times in Creed just because, you know, it's 10 years of our life, so you're gonna have that stuff. Um, you know, we've had, we've lost family members and other things. We've had kids, which is like amazing, but also the hardest thing that we've ever done in our lives. Um, uh, but CRT has been sort of the glue that kept everything together, you know, from a practical standpoint, because they were providing us with work, but also, you know, emotionally, we were able to get through a lot of stuff because of the love of the CRT family and, um, and, you know, having something to do together. I will say that uh, the hour and a half drive to the Alamosa Hospital while I was in labor was less than ideal, but having a baby in Creed is a little bit awesome, or a lot awesome. Just the, the way the community really rallies around those little new babies and, yeah, um, and takes care of the, the parents. I just think that you don't get that other places in the country. Yeah, I don't think we made dinner for ourselves for two weeks because yeah. the community had it, you know. and. If you look at the numbers, that probably means that almost every person, every resident of Mineral County made us a meal at some yeah. point. It makes me a little emotional. These are real tears. Um, <laughs> just thinking about the friends we made working in CRT. You know, company members that you know only showed up for a summer or um, um, locals that yeah. we were able to, to connect with um, while we were just summer employees and then when we were there year round. I got really lucky. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time working with the education department in various settings. Seeing them blossom and grow and get, and you know, the confidence that they acquire over the course of a summer and then they go away for a school year and then come back and uh, just how much they change and grow. It, you really create this, this mentorship and friendship with them 
Um, I'm really excited summer 2021 when I'll get to do Annie with some of those awesome kids that I've gotten to, to spend some time with. I love that like those are the memories that we get working there. Or it's bears on balconies and, and shows against all odds, the things that come together and people surviving mm -hmm. all sorts of illnesses to, to make a show happen. <laughs> and then the way that the community bands together to support um, the businesses through wildfires and this pandemic. And um, I just think there's a lot of love there that um, the world as a whole needs more of. And CRT has a, a special relationship, I think, with, um, with the patrons and supporters and employees. It's really a feeling of family um, more than most of the theaters I've worked at. It's an amazing thing. So we're excited to get back there. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Tristan Wilson. And I'm Peggy Farr Wilson. And we met in Creed in 1982. Right after I was born. <laughs> I had arrived at the theater from Kansas City. And uh, Keith Brumley, who was our scenic designer at the time, took me over to the housing to meet everybody. And I walked in uh, into Tara. Um, the housing back then was a little bit different than it is now. It was the bordello, and then there was three or four, four. really cruddy trailers uh, that we lived in. And my assignment, my housing assignment for that summer was the first trailer, which was called Tara. And um, I was to live there with Brown and Christy for the summer. And Christy and I decided to give it a good clean before the season started. And as we were cleaning, we found a big old bottle of tequila under the sink. And, well, one thing led to another. And <laughs> we had a clean t trailer, but also about 35 company members in there having a bit of a party. <laughs> yeah, so I walked into a party and introduced myself and said, Hey, everybody, I'm Tristan. And I said, Trisket, who would name their kid after a cracker? And my nickname of Cracker Man was born. <laughs> and then I, the next morning I was sitting on the stoop uh, nursing my headache. And and I he, walked by on my way to work and explored the town a little bit and sat down to chat. And about an hour later... I you, was almost <laughs> late for work. <laughs> so I pointed you towards the theater and three days later he moved in. We've been together ever since. And later this month, we celebrate 35 years of marriage. 38 years together. And it's all thanks to Creed Repertory Theater. We love Creed so much. It's a magical place for us. It's all about love. And we have so many friends there, including Brown and Christy, but dozens of people that we met there and worked with there over the years. The people that you meet in Creed are your friends forever. And um, we love it and we send all good wishes for the theater to get through this summer and next summer come back stronger and better than ever. And anybody listening, if you've got any anything that you can send them, I know they would appreciate it. Yeah, as the former managing director at Creed and, and a couple of other companies, I know every contribution makes a huge difference, whether it's a dollar, a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars. So anything you can do <laughs> will help the company survive a year and come back stronger than ever next year. So, hi Creed, thank you for <laughs> our love story, and uh, hey, it's all about love. You're always in our hearts. <laughs> Hopefully I'm in camera, I think I am. Do you want to stay there and I'll go look? No. Come on. Great. You know this is gonna be like half the video. <laughs> okay, so the question is, how did we meet and fall in love and all that garbage? That pretty, pretty garbage. Um, so at least from my perspective, <laughs> are you just gonna stare at people? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what he's gonna do. So this is scary. <laughs> And exciting, okay. Um, so I was visiting Creed. I had worked here in 2005, um, but I wasn't actually in a season again until 2010. But in 2006, seven, eight, I came back to visit Creed because I loved it so much. And that May of 2008, I was with my friend Rebecca, who had, has also worked at CRT. And 
It was a night where I was watching Freaks and Geeks. I was staying at Christine Brownie's house in that tiny little room, which was lovely. And Rebecca had gone out and I was watching this. And then she calls me and says, hey, it's open mic night, you should come out. Another of our friends was there. So I went out there, begrudgingly actually. I had to put on pants and stuff like that. So I go out and another actor at CRT at the time, Martin Buchanan, introduces me to this person. And he made a, you made a joke about <laughs> your tattoo. And then I said, you were a dumbass. Yeah, but you laughed. <laughs> I did laugh. And then two nights later was my 31st birthday. And that's when things really went down. So. <laughs> oh, you want me to tell that part? No. <laughs> um, so anyway, I was at Tommy Knockers. <laughs> Oh my God. So I was at Tommy Knockers and I was looking for a birthday kiss. I'm just gonna let you. Okay. Okay, now it's from his Well, to back up a few nights. Okay. I was at the bar. I'd probably been there a while. It had been a long, long winter. Lonely, <laughs> cold. Anyways, I was properly tuned up socially talking to Martin, he's a good guy. Meanwhile, these two blue-eyed brunette snipers come walking through the front door of the knocker. I don't know what that even means. Martin knew you guys, so I threatened <laughs> to kick his ass if he didn't introduce me. So he quickly introduced me. That's when I told you the dumb joke, and you laughed. Rebecca was polite, but didn't laugh. Oh, yeah. I see, that was your... Right. That was your clue. That was my test, the first test, and you passed it. I passed it. Yeah. So then a couple nights later, I'm back in the bar because there's nothing else to do. And they both come in again. And Rebecca walked up to me and says, it's Kate's birthday. So you need to go over there and just give her a big old kiss and say happy birthday. Now, I've never been part of any kind of chicanery where somebody would point at me and say, that guy's a ladies man. But once again, I was properly lubricated. As was I, as was everyone. To be Let's brave be enough just to walk up to a girl that I just barely met and give her a big kiss. So I did. <laughs> and then uh, I, I think we went over and sat in the little corner table and uh, I was wearing a Pearl Snap shirt and the city girl here had never seen a Pearl Snap shirt. True. So she kept trying to undo the snaps and I have uh, some visual evidence of that. <sighs> That's that night. That is that night. Yeah. So anyways, Kate reaches over, leads over and gives me another big kiss. Rebecca's sitting on the other side of me. I've got three of my closer friends at the bar, Clint, Henderson, Jeff Henderson, and I believe Brian Arnold sitting there. We're the only five or six people in the bar. Kate looks across at Rebecca on the other side of me and says, he's really good at that. You should try it. <laughs> so she leans in and starts kissing me. So now I'm just this average dude with these two totally hot blue eyed brunette snipers, one on either side of me, getting passed between the two of them while my good buddies get to watch <laughs> at the end of the bar and wonder what the hell the world's coming to. That's all I remember. <laughs> okay. Well, and then we left, which was the key, right? Because Oh yeah, we all three see, left together. <laughs> they, see, they see RJ walking out with these two women that he's been kissing. Yeah. I think there were some I, I don't know. I don't I don't know if they even remember that, but I know you felt good because Oh they remember. They, you got a reputation. Yeah. But anyway. So then I, after that, we started the long distance Chicago to Creed thing, which was yeah. interesting for me because at the time I was a dyed in the wool ski bum. I didn't have a checking account nor a credit card. I think I just gotten a cell phone and I had to figure out how I was going to get to Chicago to chase this girl. So I called my little brother who happens to be much more responsible than me 
he was a, been married for five or six years, had a house, all those responsible things. And I called him, I said, Ben, I need you to book me a plane ticket to Chicago to go see this girl because I don't have a credit card. I didn't I know Ben helped you, yeah. but that makes sense So now. Ben actually bought me my first plane ticket to Chicago and I had to pay him back. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is history. We got married here. We have a child here. Not here presently, but like here in Korea. Yeah, and the ring I gave her was my grandmother and grandfather's. My grandfather earned the money for that ring working in the Climax mine. So that's some Colorado history for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. And here we are. Yeah, here we are. It's been great. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> I built her this house. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now because this is probably going long. Yeah, but they need to know everything I've done for you. <laughs> is this just Because she can... moved here from Chicago, so I figure we're kind of even on that. That's... Yeah. Wait, what? How is that even? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I had to work that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love you, though. Oh, I love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bless. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Van Fleet. And I'm Nathan Jones. And we are a couple. A Creed couple. Yes. We're here to talk to you about... <laughs> about Creed love. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't fall in love in Creed. No. No. We... Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. We fell in <laughs> love in New York. In New York. And uh, got married, but our first year of marriage um, was when we came to Creed for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just gotten married and we had moved from New York to Las Vegas because Nate was in grad school it. there. Don't maybe don't move don't to do Vegas that. if you've never been to Vegas, uh, or if you are not really a fan of gambling. Uh, just to you know, or if you don't like the desert, maybe don't go there. Um, fortunately, <laughs> even though we were in Vegas, um, we got the opportunity to go to Creed for a summer. And we were super thrilled about it. And um, I had heard about Creed Repertory Theater for many years and, and wanted to work there. So I was really excited to get there. And Nate, being a teacher at the time, was able to come hang out with yeah. me. And I, so I showed up about a month after you started um, and was immediately sort of like brought into the fold. I had nothing to do with any of it. And yet immediately I was like, brought in and I was getting to write and to do uh, talk backs and, and the pre-show talks and things like that. And it was, um, and just immediately kind of fell uh, in love with the place. And it was really wonderful to step away from the world of teaching um, and get to be a part of that sort of creative um, community, which was really amazing. And the first time I left Creed that summer, I was driving home to uh, Vegas and I came over the hill and saw the stratosphere and I like burst into tears. I was so sad uh, to have to leave it and, I, and, and, and have to go back uh, to reality as it were, <laughs> right? Yeah, and fortunately uh, I, I kept getting hired back at Creed Repertory Theater so we, we had another summer a um, couple years later there and that's when we both sort of dipped our toes in improv mm -hmm. um and by dipped our toes that was me uh mostly i joined boomtown so that nate could do boomtown because i knew he'd be really really good at improv and he dove in head first uh and that was really awesome and was that the year that we started that was the year we had the idea for kids show right. but we didn't start writing yeah that. and like kids show i'd say is like really where i don't know like i feel like our our marriage well and our love, while it didn't start in Creed, it grew up in Creed. We came a long way we, from the where we started over the years as we kept coming back to this place and digging deeper and finding um, different ways to push ourselves and different ways to grow together. And the kids show was probably like the, the biggest culmination of that yeah. because it was uh, an amazing thing. We had this idea to do an adaptation of a Shakespeare play for uh, young performers um, about an hour long and sort of have it put in a, in a contemporary setting, dealing with issues that teens deal with. 
um, now. And uh, I have a, a background in Shakespeare, just growing up in a theater family. Um, Nate has a big background in music and and um, and sort of writing lyrics, creative writing, and I used to write <clears throat> songs and uh, lyrics and things all the time. And so the first idea was this uh, play called Rodeo and Juliet. Um, and it was sort of took place in a, you know, a country town dueling factions of a, a traveling circus and a traveling rodeo, um, through the lens of the story we all know is Romeo and Juliet. So it was a great opportunity for me to bring that creative rewriting piece and her to really bring her expertise into Shakespeare and theater. And then my education background, working with kids. And we weren't really sure how it was going to go. Oh, it could have been so bad. We were a little worried. We thought writing together was going to... I Like, I was nervous. I thought maybe we'd be fighting a lot. I felt she was right to be nervous. <laughs> um, I, 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 um, it turned out really great. It was, it was good. Yeah, it was, it's actually became a really healthy, fun, creative, new way for us to collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we do at home as a couple, but also in this creative way. Yeah. Um, and I think we learned a lot about ourselves as individuals and a couple through, yeah. through that. And then we loved it so much. We did it again the following year, um, for iMacers and, and that's where Nate's like knowledge of creative writing and, um, you're really good at sort of improving rhyme schemes and things like that. I think the improv experience and all of that really came together and. Nate wrote, wrote some really beautiful, fun stuff for iMacers. Yeah, it was just, you know, and it was just the getting to be in the in the room working with this creative project together, but then working with kids together and getting the, getting to see them soak that that experience up um, and and how much that meant meant to us was really wonderful. As our screen goes blank, um, I and think we. Past our time, maybe so. But what, that's fine. That's great. They can edit this. <laughs> They're gonna it's edit fine. it. They're gonna edit it. They're, they have great. all the fancy, um, all the fancy editing video, video tools. Yeah, they, you know, Tony and Tony has a like, camera that just follows yeah, you. Around there's gonna everywhere. be like a 10 minute thing on Christine like, Brownie that you know <laughs> we're gonna is we're gonna sign <laughs> out this whole it's compilation. Gonna be it's gonna be great. Um, but and, yeah. We love you all. We're so grateful for Creed and, and everything that the town and the theater has brought to our lives. Mm -hmm. And it has formed us in ways we never imagine yeah. and ways we will always be grateful yeah. for. It's a, it's a deep well that we will always go back to just emotionally, creatively. It's a place that, that like resides deep within us and, and that will never change. So with all of our love to all of you. We love you. CRT. Baby's loving it. Baby's loving every second of it. Okay. Wait, are we recording? I don't know. <laughs> What's <laughs> happening to the dog? I don't know. He's inhaling dirt as he, as he runs. You okay, Tucker? <laughs> Hi, I'm Morgan. Hi, I'm Tyler. Uh, we met in Creed in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, the assistant to then managing director Jonathan Alsup and was doing a lot of work um, on the administrative side of building the roof. Um, she looked great in a hard hat. <laughs> uh, and you were back for your second season. Second season in uh, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. And uh, was that the only show that year? I think it was the only show I was in. Yeah, and you did the tour. And I did the, the right tour that fall, the right stuff, the yeah, Stephen yeah. Cole Hughes tour. Yes. Um, but part of my duties were also some company management. And um, so I was contacting all of the actors and company members with their contracts and talking about their travel plans. Um, and doing housing assignments and I was in one of the pods and I had sort of filled it with uh, the women from the shop and my best friend uh, from college who was coming out to do props that year and I had one slot left open in my best friend's room and uh, Tyler was uh, a lot of fun when I chatted with him on the phone um, and on Facebook and on Facebook he laughed at my Star Wars jokes I sure did and my Jurassic Park jokes sure did and still am to this day <laughs> laughing at your Star Wars and Jurassic Park jokes uh, so I thought this he would be the best person uh, to put in my apartment he would be a lot of fun uh, also he was very cute you thought I was cute I thought you were cute <laughs> 
Um, he was also one of the first uh, company members to come into town. Some of the shop people were there and my, my friend Chris was there. Um, but he rolled in on May 5th. Kip's Grill, last dollar, got me to the town and that was it. I was flat broke. I wasn't going to get a paycheck for at least a week from Creed. <laughs> so I had no idea how I was going to eat or I didn't really have any bills, I guess. But but we invited him to come to Kip's. I mean, not knowing that backstory, of course. Um, uh, I mean, I knew that backstory. <laughs> he rolled into uh, he rolled into town on May 5th, which was the first day Kip's was open uh, for Cinco de Mayo. And the whole staff was going out uh, to celebrate the fact that we had just ripped all the seats out of Helfen and thrown them out the window. Yeah. Um, God, I wish I'd been there for that. I was sweaty. I was disgusting. No one should have had to sit near me. And but yet, I did. This guy sat near me. I muscled through it. <laughs> and uh, I ordered a gigantic lunch, and he ordered nothing. Um, because he was broke and he didn't say it was because he was broke. He said it was because, oh, I ate on the road and I'm full. And I was like, mm, no, this is a lie. Because I'm never full. <laughs> Ever. He clearly wants food. Um, so I ate one of like the four tacos that I ordered. And then I was like, oh, oh, I'm such a lady. Oh, I'm delicate. Oh, one taco. I can't, I couldn't possibly. Would you like to finish this plate of, of uh, tacos? And he did. Um, <laughs> And then that night we were dog sitting and we were clicking through Netflix options and I was like, do Land you want to watch time. the Land Before Time? Yes. And indeed he did. Um, and we basically became best friends and we did our hikes together and uh, I was the ASM on how to succeed. So we were basically together 24-7 because we were in a pod together. We were and in then rehearsal together, together and a show together. And, um, and we did all of our, our, you know, hiking and outdoor activities together and we spent the summer just going on amazing adventures mm -hmm. um and we got engaged that winter and now we're married and now we have a kid and now we're back who's coming over to say hello i think yeah well coming too slowly to get on camera fair enough so that's the story come here <laughs> all right you just anyway. really want this kid in the picture I do, he's very photogenic <laughs> okay come, come here. here child come here come here baby come, come here. here come on okay it's no, not, not happening. the dog okay it's not right, happening he's playing with the dog Okay, but that's how we met. Hello, CRT. Hello, CRT. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Creed Rep. <laughs> um, I'm Martin Buchanan. I'm Georgiana Londre Buchanan. Yes, and, and as the last names indicate, we are yet another one of those uh, couples that met uh, at the Creed Repertory Theater because of the Creed Repertory Theater. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. When uh, when was it uh, that we met? What year? The was... first year we met was 2003. Right. My right. first year in Creed. Um, it was and... my second or third season, I think. Second season, maybe. Um, and in the end of the summer of 2005, we started hanging out a lot. Yes. And then we were... Uh, put into housing together with, uh, uh, together. Yeah. We got, we got, we got, we got put into housing with another, uh, with another couple. That an, was exciting. An, an, another CRT couple for a while. <laughs> and, and it was great. It was really fun. Uh, when we were still uh, dating and we weren't engaged yet, that was in uh, 2006. So we've been dating really since 2005, like August, two. 2005 mm -hmm. 15 yeah. years yeah 15, 15 years yeah um, but uh, but but um, I uh, let's see and then in, then we had the 2006 season together uh, in that housing and then 2007 we were housed in, together in what was that Al and Diane's house yes Al Echeverria and Diane uh, sublet mm -hmm. uh, in their house and then in 2008, we became, summer 2008, we became engaged in Creed. Actually, 2007, summer 2007. <laughs> <laughs> summer 2007, sorry. We got married in 2008. Summer of 2007, <laughs> he proposed to me on the top of the San Luis Pass. Yeah, or San, San Juan, San Juan Pass. San, uh, yeah. Oh. Is, isn't that what it's called? San Juan Pass? Anyway, it's right below San Juan Peak. It's a 14,000 footer right up above the, the, the mines there. Right near the E-Golf's house. 
<laughs> and uh, it was really fun to celebrate with our CRT company that summer. Yeah. And then uh, the next summer, um, <laughs> the, ne the next summer we uh, got married. Um, or, well, we had our last full season together at Creed Repertory Theater where he was an actor and I was a costume designer mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. for the season. Mm -hmm. And um, then we left... I left first after the designs were finished and we had bought over the summer a house in Kansas City and I moved in and then he finished out the season in 2008 and moved back to Kansas City and we got married and a year and a, a year and a day later we had Felix Augustus Buchanan that's right uh, who's now a 10 year old yes our most so. important <laughs> uh, theatrical production to date Yes. Felix Augustus Great Buchanan. Great joint production. Indeed. All possible because of the Creed Repertory Theater. That's right. Felix <laughs> Augustus Buchanan would not exist if the Creed Repertory Theater did not exist. Um, we, we met because of the CRT. We know lots of uh, happy couples that met because of the CRT. We used to joke with the former artistic director of the CRT, Maurice LeMay, that he was actually running a dating service, <laughs> not a theater. Um, but it definitely worked out for us. Great minds think alike. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, great, great to talk to y'all. Um, CRT is the place for love, happiness, and creativity, and, and we love all of you. Hi. Um, hi. Ann Butler here. Um, love stories from CRT because CRT is love and that's where I found the love of my life besides Jack, Mars, Smiley and Honey, etc, etc. Short story, we are in rehearsals for Ladies Man 2008 um, in the Baxter Hall where there are French doors and I remember seeing a young woman walking in front, you know, up that street next to Carl Stone's house and um, she had this little fuzzy thing following her from behind and when I saw that thing there was an, an energy that just drew me so f forward I, I, it was like oh like that and it was so strong that it pulled Chad Afonador with that energy pulled him with me we were at the French doors and in the middle of rehearsal I go oh my god who is that uh, and then we had to go back to rehearsal. And then I saw her around town with that little fuzzy thing, and I was like, man, that's really cute. We happened to be looking for a dog for my mama, who had been without Smiley for many years, and we thought maybe it's time, after my dad had passed, that she could use a little puppy. So I kind of kept seeing her around, and I thought, maybe this is the dog for my mom. And so um, eventually I was doing laundry at Kip's Grill in June-ish, and she was sitting outside with the dog and her boyfriend and I went up to her and I was like you know we're looking for a dog for my mom and he's super cute and I just was wondering is there any more in the litter or where'd you get him or whatever because I don't believe in breeding dogs whatever so she turned to me and she had him he was this big she fit like she here's his upper body and she said want him and so I was like ugh <coughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Can you give me an hour? Can you bring him to the, the house? Because I live like, you know, half a block away. And she said, sure. So she brought him over. But before that, I called my big sister, Nora, and I was like, hey, remember how we're looking for um, a dog for mommy? I think I found one, so just let me figure this out. So she did bring him over, and two days later, I called my sisters and bro and said, this dog is my dog, eh? And that was a good call on my my part. And thank you, God, Morgan Morris, who's now Fairchild. Thank you for this guy who is the light of my life. Just everything. I want his love is profound and unconditional. And he just my papa, my oh dear Bobo, oh dear Bobo. He wants to go back to his little new dog. Nyang! Nyang! Um, so CRT, thank you. If I hadn't been there rehearsing Ladies Man at that time. I uh, wouldn't have met my soulmate, and there's no doubt about that. Bobo. Oh, dear Bobo. Thank you. Bye. 
Hey CRT family. Uh, wow, well Creed is obviously incredibly important um, in my life and in our life together. And yeah, one of the first times Luke got to come to Creed uh, was actually for John and Caitlin's wedding. Yeah. When we, uh, when I first started dating Adrian, I really liked her. And then I went to Creed for the first time. I got recognized on the street without Adrian with me because of her Facebook profile pictures. <laughs> and I went to John and Caitlin's wedding with her mom. And by the end of the first Creed trip, I didn't really like Adrian anymore. I was in love with her. Yeah, it's such a magical place. And my CRT family is such a huge part of that. And the second time was a big visit was actually over the 50th and Luke got to see me in a boom town, which was really fun. Um, and then what was our third big moment in Creed? Um, I don't know, there was a 4th of July in there. We got married in Creed. We got married in Creed. We were married up at the Emerald Ranch and a lot of the uh, CRT family came out and supported us the next day at ARPS and it was, the only place that we could have gotten married because it's it's home for both of us now. Yeah. Stay safe out there, everyone. We love you, Creed. We love you, CRT.